In this video, I'm gonna show you how to calculate the beta using two different methods. And if you stay until the end of the video, I'm also gonna share with you how you can get the beta automatically for a whole bunch of stocks at once, so you could automate this process. The first step to calculate the beta for any particular company is to gather the necessary historical stock price data. So in this case, what we're gonna do is on this side, we're gonna get the historical stock price data of the S&P. 500 and we're going to calculate the beta for apple so we're also going to need to get the historical stock data for this particular company what you can do to be able to get the data is simply go to yahoo finance type in historical data and as you can see this is the s p 500 and this is the right ticker to use after that you can select the time period and you can select the last five years and click on apply from here you can copy paste the data or download it however you know this is a little bit inconvenient especially if you're analyzing many companies at once so i'm going to show you an even more effective method so what you can do is with this add-on from y sheets that works on excel and google sheets you can simply do something like this so we're gonna do you can just type this in or you can just search for the s p 500 here on the symbol so like this and what we're looking for in terms of historical price data is this value right here this is the close uh, that's what we're going to be getting so we're going to select the close now here you can select a specific number of days so you can just use the calendar picker or just change it to like let's say 2020 for example it's very simple to use but in this case what we're gonna do that's even better is to keep the number dynamic so we're gonna select number of days and this is gonna tell you how many days of historical stock data that you want so typically when you calculate the beta for any particular stock you do five years so if there's about 300 65 days in any given year times five which is the number of years we're basically looking at this many days so we can just copy this number paste it right here and then this is going to give us the function to use so i'm just going to click here on copy and there we go the only modification that i'm going to do to the function is instead of selecting or hard coding the value i'm just going to leave it here so in case we ever want to change it so let's say i want to make this now like microsoft the data will automatically update so let's bring it back to gspc and there you go as you can see now we have these two different columns the date and the close and you can see the values right here you can see the dates right here and if i scroll all the way down we get all the way to 2019 we can obviously change the dates if we want as well and now what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this function and we're going to paste it here and then we just need to ensure that it's picking now apple instead of the s p 500 what we can also do is insert a column right here just so we can have a little bit of separation and there we go now we have the data to be able to perform the calculation which we're gonna do in two different ways now what we need to do is to calculate the percentage change so we're just going to add this column and we're gonna add it to both the s p 500 and apple stock and what this is going to do is it's going to calculate the percentage change from the current close to the close from the day before so in order to calculate that you can just simply apply this formula where you take the latest number minus the previous number all of this divided by the previous number and this is going to give you the change as a percentage so we can format it as a percentage right here and right now let's make sure that this is right so in this case the price was 5633 and it went up to 5645 so it is the right right number since it is a positive increase so after we do this you can just double click it so that way it applies to all of the different prices and as you can see it's also working on the negative numbers which is a good sign and then what you can do is you can just simply apply the same formula right here and then we just need to make sure that is right and yeah this is correct so after this we just double click and now we have the necessary data to perform the beta calculation the simple way to calculate the beta is using the slope method this is going to be method number one and the way that you do this is once you have this data that you can see right here you're going to apply 
the slope formula and this is built into Excel and Google Sheets. So in this case, what you're going to do first is take the slope of percentage change of Apple first. So we're going to select all of the data minus this one right here that says division one because we don't want to capture that. And then after that, you're going to do the same thing, but now for the S&P 500. So we're going to select this is the S&P 500. We're going to go from here all the way down, except in the last one. After that, you close your bracket and boom, just like that, you're going to get the beta right away using the slope method. Now I'm going to show you the variance covariance method, which is very similar, but the formula is slightly different. And then what I'm going to show you is the way that is the best way of all, which is where you get it automatically calculated for you. So let's get to it. So first we need to calculate the covariance. So for this, there's a covariance formula that is available on Excel. Just just make sure to use the one that says P. This is because in this case, we have the entire data population. So we don't have a small sample set. We can use this function. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the data for Apple first minus the last one. And then we're going to apply the same thing for the S&P 500. So in order to do that, we select right here. You can click on shift command or control and then down key and then move one up. And this is going to select the entire data set. And here we go. Now we have the covariance. Now what we need to do is to calculate the variance. Here's the important thing. The variance is going to be only for the S&P 500. So we're going to use this variance formula right here. Again, we want to use the P and then we are only going to apply it to the S&P 500 data because we want to calculate the variance of the S&P 500 particular data set. And then here we go. Now we have the covariance and the variance. Well, now in order to be able to calculate the beta, all we need to do is take the covariance and then divide it by the variance. And this is going to give us the data. As you can see, in both cases, the beta is absolutely the same. In simple terms, beta is a measure of the volatility of a particular stock price relative to an index like the S&P 500. If the S&P 500 has a beta of 1 and the stock that you're analyzing has a beta higher than 1, this means that the company's stock price is more volatile than the S&P 500. On the other hand, if the company has a beta lower than one, it means that the stock price is less volatile than the S&P 500. Now, before I show you the automated method that is absolutely the best, let me just address one question. So one thing that you might see, this is 1.18. Yahoo Finance and other sources may have a different number. So in this case, this is 1.24. The reason why this happens is because the dates may be slightly different. So if you have different dates, you're going to have different data. So in that case, all we need to do is modify the dates to get the same number. But in this case, this is where the automated method becomes the best option. So rather than doing this for every single company that you analyze, what you can do is let's say we have a list of companies right here. Let's say that we want to calculate their beta. So in this case, we have the free cash flow yield, but we're going to get rid of this. We're just going to type beta. We're going to get rid of this formula that was getting the free cash flow. And what we're going to do instead is we're going to apply this wise price function that allows you to get real-time price data uh, for stocks on Excel and Google Sheets. And what we're going to say is like, okay, I want for this number of tickers right here, I want, it's going to ask you what parameters do you want? And in this case, we want the name and we also want to include the beta. So all we need to do is just drag this right here. This is going to select the beta into the function. You can then click enter and then the number is going to come right here all you gotta do is just format it you can keep it as a percentage if you want but it's better to have it as a number right here and then once you have this set up you can simply click on insert you can go to recommend the charts you can use this chart maybe change the color of the chart so it's more easily visible and you can easily compare companies beta in one single go and then guess what the beauty of this method is that at any time you want to change the company you can do that and the data will automatically update so in this case there's a company called Telus is listed in the international exchange of is listed in the Toronto Stock Exchange so all you have to do is type in the Yahoo Finance ticker 
which in this case, this is the case. Now this is gonna give us the information for Talos and you can see the data right here updates and the data updates on the chart as well. So you can always have up-to-date information. Now bringing this back to Apple, you can see that we get 1.24, which is exactly on par with the number from Yahoo Finance. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications bell on, and I'll see you in the next one.